two, one. Welcome, people. We are finally here. We are a bit delayed by Delhi rains and the traffic, but we are finally here, and we are glad to have uh, Mr. Kulpreet Yadav uh, joining us today to share his experience and some advices for aspiring authors. Welcome, Mr. Uh, Kulpreet. Thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure. So. The burning question is that can anybody and everybody be an author? What what do you think? Well, according to me, I think anybody and everybody who wants to uh, become an author can become an author. So the operative word here is wants. So okay. if there is someone who um, believes in storytelling uh, and has got a compelling story inside him or her, why not? One can give it a shot and uh, become an author. So what are the things that we keep in, uh, one should keep in mind uh, when they are taking on this journey? So uh, the easiest thing is to decide to become an author. But uh, like everything else, it's very hard. Uh, uh, in the sense that uh, the first thing that I always recommend to people is that they should have read a lot of books. You know, so if you're someone who's been reading for a while, that uh, helps you to um, understand how stories work, you know, what impresses you as a reader. Uh, and uh, that plus uh, the experience that you that you have in life, if you've traveled a lot, if you've met a lot of people, um, if you have been uh, social, etc., you have a lot of experience that you've absorbed over a period of time, which... Uh, uh, you know, or can be put in the form of a story. So one of the main things that as a reader, I wonder, and with uh, times, things have changed a lot, especially recently. What is your take on the language, uh, the hold on language of a person who's trying to become an author? Um, hold on language is, of course, very important, you know, because uh, you are trying to convey uh, a good story by, you know, language is the carrier of the story from the author to the reader. So obviously it has to be, uh, it has to be written in a way that it is interesting. Um, and uh, if you say broadly, it should not have any grammatical mistakes. Uh, the, the story that you write and the passages that you write should be very coherent. They should be right amount of intensity, mystery, intrigue, whatever it is. Uh, whatever is the genre that you're writing. So language is, of course, very, very important. So there's a saying that, uh, you know, uh, one should uh, ideally try and write in their mother tongue because that's the language they think in. Do you agree okay. to that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's a hard question to answer. It depends on how familiar, how comfortable you are with your mother tongue. Now, I hail from the state of Haryana, but I've never lived there. I was born in Chennai. I was uh, I did my schooling in Chandigarh. I did my college in Pune, the place where you are. Uh, and I became an officer in Goa. I've lived all along. So uh, uh, the language which, which I think uh, naturally comes to a person like me, because my father was in the Air Force and I was I also wore uniform for 23 years as English. And uh, I feel very comfortable writing in English language. But I, I, I fully understand maybe, you know, if you are someone who's... Uh, uh, more comfortable with your uh, with your own language. It could be Tamil, it could be Bengali, it could be Punjabi, whatever. There's absolutely no harm in writing it in your in your in your own language. And uh, thereafter, uh, translating it. If you can, if your language skills, English skills are good, you can do it on your own. Or else, you can hire services of a translator. So, uh, the, another issue with language in storytelling is that. Nowadays, uh, it's never in one language. A lot of English books are coming out. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so what is your take on those books? Or the way of storytelling that those books... I see us? no harm. I see no harm. Uh, particularly in mass market books, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, like you see Bollywood. So Bollywood has got all influences, you know, Urdu and that Mumbai language and Hindi and few words of English. All those things are existing. I'm sorry, the power has gone off. Uh, at my place, so uh, this is rather odd, but I'm sure the generator will will kick in very soon. Uh, 
I don't know what to do with this. Anyway, uh, just to continue uh, with, with that. Um, so uh, where were we? What did you ask? Uh, the bilingual storytelling. Style. Yeah, yeah. So, so as I said, you know, as I said, Bollywood uh, uh, has got, uh, uh, you know, it, it's uh, all, all, all languages are used. Uh, why not in mass market English books? It is absolutely okay. Uh, yes, uh, when you talk about literary fiction, particularly, we talk about fiction here, uh, then maybe the use of language is more important. But uh, language keeps changing. You know, our language today is different than what the language was. Uh, let me do one thing. Let me just walk across. Welcome back. <laughs> and welcome I'm back sorry about to the this. power as well, electricity <laughs> yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, I think it's raining heavily. So, so as totally we were uh, chatting just before the you got disconnected, uh, yeah. we were talking about bilingual, uh, bilingual language. Yeah. Yeah. So as I said, you know, it's absolutely okay for mass market uh, books yeah, if you are, yeah. yeah, if if you're if you're writing for the masses. Uh, I think there's absolutely no harm in writing in a language that the masses feel comfortable with. But yes, if you're writing um, uh, an literary fiction or you're writing non-fiction, which is meant for certain certain uh, kind of readership, perhaps Hello? you need to stick to good language. Hello? Yeah, and we are back in contact. Can you hear me? Yeah, of course I can. Can you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, really sorry, viewers. As you know, this happens. This is India. So we have uh, Mr. Mukesh Srivastava saying, Hey, Kulpit, I'm listening. Okay. Hi, hi to him as well. <laughs> okay. So uh, coming back to what we were discussing, the language, because I'm very obsessed with the language of a book used in okay. a book. Especially when, as a reader, I'm reading a book, I feel that um, if I don't learn at least one new word from a book. Uh, should I really spend so much time on it? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I also understand when people say that, okay, this is a, a way for us to, you know, relax, not why should we have to sit down with a dictionary when we are reading a book to relax? So yeah, what, do you take? what kind of book do you personally prefer to read? I like books which are, um, as far as the language is concerned, uh, the language is simple. But at the same time, uh, the content is not shallow. You know, it is something that is able to move me. It is, uh, the story should be able to make me think, entertain, uh, uplift, uh, etc. So I don't think we, we deliberately need to use difficult words just to impress the reader. I think that's a, that's a wrong way of doing it. I know some of the aspiring writers they have this tendency to find synonyms which you know are heavy sounding and they'll replace those synonyms. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, I feel that wherever possible, even if by mistake, if you've used a difficult word, if you can replace it with an easier word, I think you should do that. And that's what I try to do. In fact, uh, 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 it can sometimes become a, become a problem because uh, some of my books, uh, you know, uh, recent books particularly, when the bloggers review them, uh, they'll always mention this line, you know, that the language was very simple and we liked it. Uh, but, you know, sometimes they might say the language is very simple from, from, the, from, from the context that why was the language so simple? You know, they're reading I English I apologize. Book. I'm one of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I must say that I work really hard. I've said this many times in festivals, etc. I work very hard to keep my language simple because I don't want language to become a bar barrier between me as a storyteller and uh, the reader, language should not be the barrier, barrier at all. So um, I, I personally like books which are, which, which you know, the writers who use uh, simpler languages, but simpler does not mean that the plot is uh, simple. Uh, uh, the story should have depth. The characters should be interesting. We should be able to relate to those characters. Uh, you can also establish a setting if you want by use of, you know, simple words. Uh, so that's my preference. Um, and I think that's a preference of most of the readers, whether they openly say this or not. Yeah, but then at the same time, there is also this fact that there are two kinds of simple in languages. One simple is where it's like you're writing an essay for your school, not even college school. <laughs> and the okay. other way is that even by, while using the same words, the way mm -hmm. you frame the sentences, it makes it much uh, much more beautiful when you're expressing whatever you're trying to uh, tell to the uh, to your readers. 
the way you frame the sentences with those same words can make a lot big change so that kind of understanding how does one uh, learn that kind of thing so uh, i know what you are trying to say uh, you are probably trying to say uh, you know hint at the sentence construction yes. and uh, i agree that that is very important uh, you see uh, every book uh, you know has got a certain rhythm mm-hmm. so uh, there will be writers who will prefer shorter sentences sometimes one word sentence and uh, sometimes the sentences will be a little longer and that's why the, the the whole reading experience for a reader you know it has a kind of a rhythm which needs to be sustained throughout so what i personally feel is that uh, you should try to um you know uh, uh try to the same place if possible with the same mindset with the same mood uh, uh you know and without many breaks in your st- in your writing process because if you write let's say half the book and go away for six months somewhere and come back and write again then probably the flavor of your writing is going to change so i think as long as the writers um uh um, uh write uh, uh continuously and uh, they they focus on constructing the sentences they feel very comfortable with i think it's going to come out uh, come out well so uh, as far as we are talking about uh, how can anybody become an author <coughs> so one of the main things is the plot the storytelling that uh, the story that the author is going to tell second is the medium the language uh what are other things other elements that one should keep in mind so uh okay um few technical you know fundamentals are very important uh, one of them is um, elements of the story the aspiring mm-hmm. writer should understand what are the elements of the story uh the aspiring writers also should know about the structure of the story uh they should know uh where to write dialogues uh, what kind of language should be u- used while writing dialogues how is how is that different in comparison to description uh they should know a little bit about narrative tense um and uh, uh with these in mind uh, uh also you know the use of literary devices should not be used too much but when necessary uh, to make that your writing stands out and it is impressive you are able to convey what you want to convey you should employ the devices uh that uh, that that are required so with these basic fundamentals in right in mind and uh, i think anybody should be able to write a good book this is what we call as craft of writing mm-hmm. so craft of writing is important and i think it comes with uh you know like everything else perspiration you know you got to sweat it out by which what i mean to say is that you need to write a lot you need to read a lot and uh, you need to write a lot of short stories very important try to write a short story and send it to international publications or even indian uh literary magazines and you know you'll get the taste of your uh, uh the first taste of rejection and i think that's very important because yeah, if after getting rejected two or three or four times or 10 times if you're going to give up then probably you were never meant to be a writer so uh, at every stage you're going to get rejected and uh, uh you your your craft will improve as you work harder and harder and get more and more desperate over a period of time i would say that it it may take something like uh you know depending on the uh the time that you spend and and the original talent that you have and the hard work that you're doing how much you're committing yourself to the process of writing anything from 3 years to let's say 7 to 8 years for you to really write a book that makes an impact <laughs> so yes uh, all those tools are there reading a lot and writing a lot will help and getting feedback like you said uh, uh, to submit to literary journals and things so uh, what about uh, people who are already blogging who already have a source of feedback from their audience but still want some more uh, feedback how do they go about it other than submitting to journals or something you see uh, you know blogging uh, is both a good thing and a bad thing mm-hmm. uh, it's a double edged sword because what happens is whatever you write it will go online and mm-hmm. you will you will feel comfortable because it has been published but it may not be really that impressive work you know uh, and uh, without the power of uh, you know blogger or wordpress probably that particular uh, blogger or author would have never you know got an opportunity maybe 10 years ago to publish his or her, his or her own work so uh, blogging can be a problem 
uh but blogging has got a positive side as well i mean um you can definitely write what you want um and uh, uh you can get feedback as you said you can write your own short story you can write your own poet poetry you can probably review some books that you like and what you like about them what you don't like about them there will be other other you know people with a similar uh, experience who'll come back and you know comment on your on your blog and you'll go and comment on their blog so collectively i think uh, it works well for the writing and publishing ecosystem it helps everyone but uh, the only flaw being you know you, you, you can just uh, write whatever you want and get away with it and you, you sometimes uh, might feel uh, you know it might give you a false sense of confidence that you are a very good writer which you may not be right yeah. so uh, i would say blogging is a good thing to start out but uh, after a year or so once you've reviewed a lot of books written your own stuff got your feedback i think you should launch yourself in uh in you know in a mode where you can write your own story uh, or your own novel and send it to a professional uh, publishing company or to an agent and see what they say right if they say it's not good enough and if it is rejected uh then probably you 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 know you realize that you need to work harder and by doing all this you you learn over a period of time that's a great advice what about uh, going to an editor first is that an option getting a tip maybe a developmental editor uh it's not a bad option uh, but you see uh i don't think at first instance you write something uh, and go straight to a developmental editor developmental editing if required will always be done by the professional publishers right uh okay. one should try you see writing is a very solitary kind of a profession yeah right? uh you know when you write your first book i must tell this to aspiring writers that you write your first book you share it with your boyfriends and girlfriends and parents and wives and husbands or whatever friends everybody will be very excited and they'll give you great uh, you know they'll all give you great thumbs up that this is good work and they will take out time and read your work and say this is fantastic but after your second book or third book or fourth book you'll get lonelier and lonelier and lonelier because uh, obviously you know um, i've got a friend uh, who told me once that uh you know after my first book when i was supposed to go for a party and function somewhere i used to say hello to my gathered friends they used to say oh kulpreet has come here just run away he's going to ask us to read his next book you know <laughs> even at the editing stage so yeah, yeah. Uh, uh so it is you you are really really on your own and the only person probably who's going to read it is your editor and uh, many times you will not get to you know see the face of uh the editor it could be someone who's totally you know from a different background different gender different age group so uh your writing has to actually cross all these barriers mm -hmm. so uh you need to sustain uh, you know you need to sustain yourself keep your bottle up and uh, keep working hard at your writing and over a period of time people will sit up and notice and say this is a good writer okay So and what about better readers have you ever worked with better readers better readers yeah there are readers who are uh, wonderful quite a few of them in fact um uh, almost uh, on an average uh, i mean a lot of people write to me but once in a week i'll definitely get some feedback from someone which will uh, you know make me to pause and and reflect and and think about that feedback so um see writing is a two way communication reader is as important as a writer if there is no reader then there is no need for a writer so um uh, i think uh, everybody knows this uh, it's very cliche to say but uh, people have to constantly you know uh, uh, um take their reader seriously okay so you have one of your latest releases uh, releases is uh, queens of crime that you have co-written with sushant, uh, sushant singh that's yeah. right So tell us a little bit about the book and the experience of co-writing it with uh, Sushant, uh, Sushant Singh. Okay, uh, so here's the book. Uh, I've got it ready here. It's called. Yeah, uh, could you just bring it closer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is it visible? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yes. this is by uh, Sushant Singh, as you can see, and Kulpreet Yadav. Sushant is a very popular, critically acclaimed Bollywood actor. Uh, he is also the he was the host of South on India till some time back. He's done that yeah. for ten years. So he's someone who's who had a lot of experience about crime stories. So my agent, uh, my literary agent, put us together, and uh, we were not knowing each other at all. Uh, this was last last year, but over a period of time, we developed a kind of rapport because we were discussing all the crime stories that he's done, 
and the crime novels that I've written in the past. So we had something in common that we worked on together. And uh, thereafter, uh, we thought that we should, you know, try to write crime story, which has some common thread. And uh, we uh, came up with the idea of writing, uh, you know, true stories of women criminals in India. So that was uh, a yeah. good idea, but it was very hard to do because uh, there aren't very many women criminals because uh, uh, female criminology also, you know, is, is a subject that is not, uh, that people have started recently taking very seriously. So uh, if you take a percentage, then the male criminals are 99% and female criminals just one person. So we just had that one person pool, you know, to yeah. take out 10 stories from. So uh, we were able to, uh, you know, um, narrow down to 12, 20 stories, 20 women criminals. Uh, and uh, thereafter, we further proved it down to 10. Then we worked on the plot and we started a research process. Research process requires you to, you know, meet the investigating officers from the police to to see the court cases, you know, the the, the reports, uh, the, the court reports. Uh, and the police procedurals also you need to understand, etc., etc. So we did all that, and uh, we we came with this book, which has been there for eight months in the market. We've had uh, four uh, reprints, and I, my only advice is to you, uh, because this is the base the basis of the readers who got back to me that please don't read it at night. <laughs> <laughs> These stories are not horror stories, but they're almost horror stories. They're going to scare you. You will lose your sleep. So. Try to read it during yeah, daytime. So the when thing people is that, uh, we don't commit much crimes, but when we do, we go crazy about it. It seems. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I mean, it's it's a good thing I would say because uh, you know the men uh, 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 when they read this, they know that okay, I have, have to be, be very careful. careful with the women around me. So I think overall the crime against women should go down by this book, if I may say. <laughs> So Mukesh has asked, uh, you already sort of answered it, but I will still like to ask. You have sure. written books in more than one genre. I want to know that, do you read books of same genre that you are writing? So yeah, I, I would like to sure. combine a little bit more to that and say that this is probably, Queens of Crime is probably something that's far, far different from all of your other books as well. So yeah. combining everything, just tell us about what kind of reading you do. So Queens of Crime is the first non-fiction book that I've written. All of the books that I've written earlier were fiction. Um, once again, the power has gone out. Yeah. Uh, it's such a terrible day. <laughs> uh, OK, so Queens of Crime is the, um, is the first non-fiction book. All other earlier books were, uh, were fiction. But I've written romance. I've written uh, romantic uh, thrillers. And I've also written espionage novels mm -hmm. yeah so uh that's it can so you still hear me the, the question was yeah the original question was that do you read books of the so same genre that you're writing yes of course i do i do yes uh, very much i mean uh since i write uh, espionage uh, i read espionage novels uh, i write thrillers so i read a lot of thrillers uh, I write romance. In fact, that the only romance novel that I've uh, written, and if, if I can mention it now, I don't have a copy right now, but I've got a poster uh, because there are no copies of, uh, of uh, the last love letter at home. So this is called the last love letter. This is how the cover looks like. This is my first and the only romance novel that I've written. Prior to this, I had written romantic thrillers. So yes, to answer your question, all kinds of books, including uh, 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 nonfiction, short stories, uh, horror, uh, something that I've started reading recently. I uh, love, uh, uh, you know, all, all kinds of books, honestly. So Mukesh seems to be an ardent fan of yours because he mentioned that he has written a romance too before you mentioned your romance novel. Okay, that's very nice. <laughs> all the very best to Mukesh. So, so what's the book that's on your bedside table right now? Oh, okay. Bedside table. So it is called, just a minute, it is called my... His father's, his father's Disease. So this is by Aruni Kashyap. And uh, this I've just started. Uh, prior to this, uh, I had read a horror book by, by Neil De Silva, a friend of mine. Uh, this was published by Penguin last year. And uh, I tried to finish a book. Uh, and prior to that, it was Atomic Habits. Uh, it's, it's a nonfiction book, a self-help book. And I've never written a self-help book. But I love to read self-help books as well. 
in between. So I try to finish a book, one book in three days, three to four days, and a mix of uh, you know different genres. Okay, so we are uh, currently running low on time, so okay. we would like to quickly wrap up. And one thing about Queens of Crime, other than the fact that people should not read it at night, one thing about Queens of Crime, one selling point. Selling point uh, should be, uh, um, I'm such so poor at marketing. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, if not for me, read for Sushant Singh. He's a popular actor. He's won so many awards in the films. Uh, so, uh, in fact, uh, you know, uh, if I show his picture to the viewers, probably they'll be able to identify him. Here it is. So, yeah. I don't know if the light is flicking. So, Sushant is there. And also, you can see me. So, yeah, if not for me, for him, definitely read it. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that's going to keep you, uh, you know, thinking about women in crime for a really long time. Okay, folks, the link to the book on Amazon is in the description, but it's also available on in bookstores or near your location. So go grab a copy and remember not to read it at night. And we will be back again pretty soon with Mr. Kulpreet Yadav. And thank you, sir, for joining us. And we would love to have you back soon. It is really a pleasure. I'm sorry for the power interruption twice in between and also for the delay in start because of Delhi rains. This is totally unexpected. And uh, uh, I've never seen this power disruption for I don't know how many months. So unfortunate, but really a pleasure to interact with you. Look forward for the next session. Thank you. Thank you.